Hola. Hola. Okay. We're going to do this uh, one more time. Do you remember the Viva Penpot Fest? Okay. 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 So, Viva Penpot Fest. Viva Penpot Fest. Viva Penpot Fest. Thank you. All right, welcome to uh, the second day of uh, talks. Um, did you enjoy the Kitamara experience uh, yesterday? Yay. Oh, yes. So we have a shorter day today, and you know, at some point we have to put an end on things. Uh, so sorry, but yeah, then you have the weekend, OK? I think everyone wins. Um, we're going to start with a talk by myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm introducing myself. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Pablo, so you have and I'm going to start with a uh, short keynote, actually. It's going to be uh, quite short. And then, of course, we will continue with uh, Dalai Felinto from Blender and the rest, the rest of the speakers. Um, I don't think there are any housekeeping rules uh, to share. Just, again, uh, make sure that you uh, honor the sacred rule, which is you're encouraged to cheer and applaud every time you feel so during uh, Penpot Fest, OK? <laughs> OK, let's do this. The state of Pemports and the rise of AI. So back in 2020, uh, you can see a shot there. That's from FOSDEM 2020, before, the, before lockdown. And you can see me there. And I was sharing this idea of this is happening. Pempot is happening. And if you were there in the audience, uh, you would remember that I said, perhaps you don't know this, but you're witnessing history, and you're part of that history. Okay? And back then, I, th I think some people could be ex ex skeptical, like, you know, what's happening? Okay, I'm saying today to you, attending the first Pempot Fest makes you special. <laughs> And you're part of the history, OK? Do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? OK. Let's see in three years you know, what we are able to achieve with you. And then a couple of weeks ago, actually, I, I was posting this on the community space about the 400K users and growing, uh, particularly the interesting bit of the self-hosting, the, the private instances that people are using, because Penpot is a server. Is a, is a platform that you can use using your browser. Um, you can use our SaaS, or you can, can self-host Penpot. And this is a chart I want to show to you. Uh, there are like three, three bits there that need some explanation. So there is a dip there. <laughs> what is that dip? Some data collection was not working that day. And then um, you see a couple of spikes. So what you're seeing here is the rate at which every week we get anonymous telemetry from new self-host instances. So this is basically showing acceleration because each week we get more new instances. Okay? And you can see a clear trend. Now, the two spikes, I think, are easy to, uh, to spot. And for me, it's easy to explain. The first one, uh, there was some acquisition going on last year. I don't know if you heard about that. It was uh, some big deal. And then the second one was Pempot exiting beta. So that is a very nice project. And again, this is the rate at which new instances are added. So the cumulative is massive. Now, I want to get a bit serious now, because we have a very strong ethos about why we do stuff, why we, we build Penpot. And I think uh, it is a moment where, as a, you know, as a keynote, uh, I have to send strong messages about some of the um, key principles that drive what we are doing, why we're doing this, for whom. So this is the standard, the proprietary format. And we say no to proprietary formats. We say yes to open standards and SVG and CSS. <laughs> and many other open standards. Some of them are ready to do design tokens, perhaps. Um, we say no to design and developer silos, silos, modes, whatever you want to call it. We say no to that. 
We say yes to welcoming developers to the design process. That's more. We say no to SaaS only. We say yes to SaaS, private cloud, hosting as a service, and desktop. Because we really want to build a deployment agnostic platform. So your rules. We say no to secrecy. We say yes to full transparency. And there you get a screenshot of our Tiger project. That's a current, uh, a current sprint for Pempo. You can see and know exactly what we're building real time. And then, of course, <laughs> we say no to closed and expensive. We say yes to open source and free forever. OK, so this uh, staying true to these principles uh, basically means that we don't take shortcuts. We don't take shortcuts. And uh, some people might believe that if you don't take shortcuts, you go slow. But that's not true. That's not true because if you see how fast we came from the alpha to exiting beta in just two years, it means that, no, actually, you, you could go fast. You can, be, you can stay true to your principles and, and, and still be fast, super fast, actually. By the way, nice picture from the team. And one of the reasons behind that speed is our secret sauce. And our secret sauce is that ratio that you see there. The core team is one to two, one designer per two developers. Far away from the, let's say, OK-ish, one to five, or the ind industry standard, one to 10. So I think if you really want to emulate some of the successes or the innovation that comes with Fempod, I invite you to try that one to two ratio, one designer per two developers. I don't know if that's like the golden ratio for product development, but it's a very good one for us. Now, of course, we, can, we cannot do this alone, even with that ratio. <laughs> yeah. And um, I want to mention this case study with Flex Layout, which came out uh, yeah, three months ago, right, when we exited in beta. Here we opened it as a, as a beta for the community to get feedback. And they so much improved what we were building. So it's both the ratio and then the bigger ratio, which is open core team and the community. It is you that actually bring a lot of innovation to the team. And it's the way we are going to continue to build new features, like grid layout. Grid layout will also have this open beta model. So you will be able to participate and give us feedback. And then the community, of course, gives a lot in return. These are just a couple of examples. Libraries and templates, really high quality content for you know, get you started using Pempod. We have dozens of high quality of those, design systems, libraries, templates. I'm using one for this presentation, which is the Pempod slides templates. <laughs> Actually, some people. Uh, during Pempot Fest, we're using that one. I think it's super cool. You should try it. It's a very expensive piece of software just to you know, do presentations. Pempot, but you, you know, it's a, why not? Collateral effect. And then, of course, the translations. We have 32 la supported languages coming from the community, but, we, but you know, 32 pales in comparison with, I think, 300 languages, Perry said yesterday, just in Nigeria. So 32 is nothing compared to 300 languages in Nigeria alone. But still, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. And also, we're very much focused on bringing those uh, not so popular languages, because that also means uh, building an ac a truly accessible platform like Pempot. And then um, let's uh, just share this midterm roadmap. Actually, yesterday during the open session uh, with Carol and Andy, I'm sure you enjoy that, plugin architecture, token studio integration, and the Tiger Confluence were mentioned. But then I would like to uh, focus on the desktop offline mode, because this is one of the most requested features that we have. <laughs> and 
I would like to uh, shout out to uh, Corp's community member here, because he's done an amazing job in bringing Fempot to the desktop, using uh, desktop-oriented technology like Electron. But he's now working on a fully integrated desktop and Podman Docker container so that you can have the full Pempot experience within the desktop. And then what I like to call desktop as a server mode, I don't know if that's going to be a thing in the future, but basically you have your desktop, and then you can connect with all, you know, you can allow people to connect to your desktop as a server using third party integration or your local network. I think it's very cool to have that. So this is, this is coming next. Do you like this desktop as a server? Just some feedback? OK. I don't know. It, is, uh, it could be a new trend. Of course, uh, multi uh, operating system support, et cetera, et cetera. But then the short term brings us uh, components version two, you know, very much improved. <laughs> I see people like, yes, I need this. This is coming soon. Um, uh, they revamped UI, which is very cool. You get it, you know? I like to, there's a picture with a revamp UI. OK, let's do it. Thank you. And um, slicker, faster, you know, trendier. We will continue to evolve. This is really, really cool. And of course, great layout, great layout, great, 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 great. <laughs> uh, you uh, had a taste yesterday of a wonderful live demo by uh, Clara and Alonso. I mean, that was, that was amazing. OK. But then, <laughs> the, it's the state of Pempot and then the rise of AI. Because you cannot do a keynote these days without mentioning AI, but also because we are be, we've been busy. We've been busy. So I think the key message here is that this is, this is a reality. Uh, it, is, it is a cool reality, but I think in the same way we, we strongly believe at Pempot that technology is not neutral, neither are we. And I think we have to take a stand as what, what AI we're bringing to the users and developers and the broader community. So I'm just a word of caution. I think it's not going to sound like that. People are not going to uh, say explicitly something like this. You will know when you are getting this type of message. So I think uh, it is time that we change the landscape. And we've been exploring some very cool open source AI challenges related to Pempot. And I want to share those, how we, what we are exploring, what are our ideas around how open source AI can be uh, exciting for both designers and developers using Pempot. Do you want to see that, what we've been exploring? Yeah, you want. So these are the five challenges that we've been working on. We have the design copilots. We have the UX to documentation generator. We have the design system advisor, the content generation, and one that we call, as a bonus, generative-based copilot. And I think I would like to thank Neurons Lab, a great partner that has been helping us uh, achieving uh, you know, some of these explorations. I'm going to share uh, three of them to you with some mock-ups, OK? So you get an idea. You get a taste. The first one would be the editing SVG. By the way, you saw the legend there, so you know that it is tough, right? The technology readiness, the risk, and complexity. We are very honest. We want to be very honest with you about what is the real state of the art. It is not ready yet. The highly structured data that is required is not ready. Uh, the, the current models that we have are not equipped to understand highly structured data that convey behavior, logic, intent, they are not ready yet. But there are some short-term ideas that we wanted to explore. So this is the editing SVG, again, open standards. So this, you could go here, SVG editing, convert the ellipses into bubbles following the design trends, and then create linear gradients as a field parameter using the current colors, OK? And you will get that. OK? That's very nice. That's SVG editing. <laughs> yeah, the sacred rule.
that gives me a bit of time to drink. This would be um, changing properties in the SVG components themselves. So SVG editing again, but now I want to redraw the selected icons in a field style while maintaining the aesthetics. OK, I get that. And then, OK, but now make the icons two-tone by keeping the current color and adding the color primary. And you're mentioning a variable that you have in your design system. And you get this. We're not going to judge whether this was a better idea or not. You know, this is what you wanted. You get it, OK? But we can move uh, and evolve this uh, so much. You have here a list of layers and components, and I want to create more components out of the design system I already have. So here with this app, I just select generic components. I want hover, pressed, focused, and disabled states for all of that. And then you get this, OK? This is, this is saving you a lot of time. Woo -hoo. <laughs> it, Things that we are exploring, OK? And then we have somewhere in between. And this is very dear to us because this connects uh, developers and designers in very exciting ways. This is a music app. You've seen this because we use it for a lot of demos. And what if we could generate the documentation? You know, as a designer, you are so happy with your design. You think it's, it's really neat. It has the interactions, the information that you need. But now, that's the boring part. We need to write tech specs. We need to write user stories. We need to tell our developer peers you know, how to build this. Okay? But what if, what if we could just ask to generate that documentation, saving the boring bits for our fellow peers? Because I think open source AI and design is going to be about really, you know, not forcing me to do the boring part, but also helping all the team members not doing the boring part. So what if we could do this? And I get this, and this is real. This is a mock-up, but this is real. It is surprisingly ready to get great user stories, great tech specs out of designs using PenPod, including, uh, and then you would link it to Taiga, which is another, our other product, and you could have all the user stories there in your Kanban. So this is cool, right? That is, this is the type of AI that really, really drives developers and designers together. And then we could have more documentation, including flows, a really thoughtful relationship between the design and the tech specs. This is really exciting. You see flows, you see stories, everything. So, this is, I want to announce that this is all public now. Today, we're announcing that actually these are GitHub repositories that you can go and check and understand what we're exploring. We're sharing this. Remember when we said no secrecy, open source? We're sharing this with you today so that you get this is a different way of exploring AI. This is a way to explore AI with the community, for the community. So those are the QR codes that will lead you to those GitHub repositories, and you will see all the information, the state of the art, documentation, and some bit of code to get you started. What do you think about this? Thank you. <laughs>